Condensed metaphysics, uh, condensed meta theory, and experiment, it's a very uh, rich field with many problems. And what is interesting is that the field is uh, constantly developing due to uh, finding new materials and new technologies. So, and that basically help uh, for the for the development of this field. Uh, so, condensed matter is the study of a system with large number of particles, electrons, molecules, or uh, ions. And the quick question which we are trying to answer in our studies is can we understand the uh, emerging properties <clears throat> in these systems such as uh, metallic behavior, insulating behavior, superconducting behavior, and uh, many different others. So uh, condensed matter physics at Minnesota uh, has several of us who are working on um, various aspects of, of what we can do with electrons and materials. And in particular, are there ways to exploit their interactions? This is the field of highly correlated systems, the fact that electrons interact with each other, and in some cases that can dominate the physics, uh, superconductivity being a classic example. Uh, another case is where we, whether we can exploit their quantum properties, things like their charge and spin in coherent ways to either transfer or process information in new ways. Uh, you've certainly heard about quantum computing, and this is not a topic that we work on in the sense of trying to build quantum computers, but several of us are looking at um, fundamental aspects of physics which would impact things like um, coherence of uh, quantum phenomena over long time scales. Uh, we like to know how uh, the different degrees of freedom and in matter interact. For example, uh, spins with each other, um, as would happen in a magnetic material. Uh, um, the interaction of, of, of spin magnetism, for example, with elastic degrees of freedom or heat. Right? These are the things that will determine uh, how long excitations live in, in condensed matter. Um, uh, there is a sense in which condensed matter is only a couple steps removed from uh, the world of applications, things like solar cells, memory and computers. Um, and so uh, a few of us are working on topics that are more applied in focus, um, but in which we still use our, our, the tools in our physics toolbox um, to work and understand new materials. Let me tell you about some of the uh, centers and facilities on campus which facilitate research in our various uh, subfields. Um, for many years, uh, Minnesota has been home to the Minnesota Supercomputer Institute, which is used by both theorists and experimentalists in, in um, the department. Uh, we have also significant central facilities that support our efforts in materials and condensed matter physics. For example, a materials characterization facility that has electron microscopes and X-ray crystallography, et cetera, as well as um, two clean rooms that are part of our nanofabrication facility uh, that are, are very important in condensed matter. In fact, sometimes biophysicists use those uh, facilities as well. Um, we appreciate the opportunity to be able to collaborate with people from other departments. Uh, uh, several of our faculty are members of the Material Research Science and Engineering Center, which has also funded some smaller collaborative grants in which we participate. And uh, in a few cases, there are sort of smaller centers. One, the Center for Quantum Materials, that's basically housed in our school, um, and other efforts that involve, for example, uh, people in the medical school or uh, electrical engineering. The research topics that we'll be addressing over the next few years uh, include uh, mostly looking at uh, something called topological uh, quantum computing, so um, in quantum information science, which is really a very rapidly growing field at the moment. Um, there, there's an idea for how to create quantum bits that are very resilient to losses of information, which is really one of the big challenges for quantum computers going forward. Um, and so probably the most promising approach in this regard are these uh, so-called topological quantum bits based on special states called Majorana modes. And so that's, that's the major focus of my group. We're looking at them uh, in a variety of ways uh, in uh, one-dimensional uh, material systems and two-dimensional material systems. 
so in terms of the devices that we uh, that we're, we're making and studying here, um, they they are essentially devices that typically combine superconductivity and magnetism uh, with um, existing semiconducting properties. So, for example, one of the leading types of devices that we make are Josen junctions. So these are essentially combination of several uh, superconducting contacts uh, and whatever the underlying material is that we're using for the junction, which is can be a graphene or a TMD or a semiconducting nanowire. And depending on what properties we're looking after, we'll use different combinations of materials. For terminals, this is a very new field and there are ideas for creating topological states. Uh, we're looking at creating tunnel probes into these Josephson junctions to really look at the density of states. And uh, something that's really, uh, that we're really pioneering is an approach where we <clears throat> combine also magnetic materials with these systems. Well, I think the unique, uh, unique capabilities of our uh, group are really uh, the combination of techniques that we apply and the fact that we combine expertise in both um, magnetic materials, semiconducting quantum systems and superconducting systems. Typically the students in my lab, um, what they, how they spend their time and how they do the work is that um, a large fraction of the initial work for every project uh, involves fabricating the devices that will be studied. So, and for this we're actually in a very good position. The University of Minnesota has a, um, one of the best clean rooms uh, in the country and so we're basically taking the materials into the clean room, which is essentially in the same building as, uh, as our lab. And we do all kinds of advanced processing to really uh, pattern them on the nanoscale. So we're making nanoscale quantum devices. And then once you have these, the typical next step is to bring them into the lab. And that's where we measure them um, using dilution refrigerators. So we have state-of-the-art dilution refrigerators that enable us to cool uh, down to temperatures below 10 millikelvin, apply magnetic fields at different angles. Uh, if need be, we can also use uh, high frequency measurements. So we have a whole suite of, of uh, techniques that we can apply to these materials. My area of research is uh, continuous matter. I'm an experimentalist. And uh, the particular research direction uh, my lab is doing is particularly studying those global two-dimensional materials. Uh, the nice thing about those materials that uh, piqued my interest is that if you see it down to atomic limit, uh, namely, for example, graphene, which is one atomic layer thickness of graphite, so the band structure as well as the electronic properties or thermal properties becomes completely different from its bulk form. First and foremost, like, uh, there are like 50 uh, different known uh, 2D materials out there, uh, ranging from superconductor, topological insulator, as well as semiconductor and the semi-metal. In addition to that, we can actually combine them, for example, putting one material on top of another material, sometimes with a twist angle, to recreate our new band structure, uh, sort of by design. Uh, we can create confinement for the electrons on the size that is comparable to the Fermi wavelengths. In a way, in addition to creating a new band structure by design, we can also, uh, based on this band structure, create uh, like a local manipulation or quantum control of the local Hamiltonian and use it as a, a novel platform to search for a new correlated as well as single electron. One of the uh, biggest directions that is attracting more and more scientists these days is like a, eventually we want to hopefully uh, build some next generation quantum devices or a quantum computer. My particular group is more working about the uh, emergent behavior and trying to understand uh, them from a microscopic point of view. I'm mostly focusing in magnetism and I'm interested in different materials. Uh, why a particular magnetic order is happening or why it is completely absent. I think nowadays we understand that magnetism is not the classical field or not necessarily the classical field. And there are a lot of quantum phenomena happening in uh, magnetism and uh, I believe that uh, the magnetism which I study usually happens in strongly correlated electron systems, so it's a magnetism of the spin of electrons which has strong interaction between them. And depending on the lattice types and the type of the interaction, we can have uh, different topological properties, different emergent topological properties, we can have different frustrated lattices, and a lot of new phenomena. And what is 
interesting because you have uh, many different degrees of freedom, they interact with each other and that leads to a lot of interesting phenomena which we try to understand. These numerics in principle include uh, exact generalization and Monte Carlo simulation and uh, uh, maybe some molecular dynamics simulation. They use various type of mean field approximation and uh, perturbation theory uh, to obtain some results. So uh, my main principle for myself and also for my students is we have a problem and then we see how to solve it. If we need to learn something new, we start learning something new and I'm happy to learn with my students and I'm happy to learn from my students how to do uh, something. I'm interested in understanding how unconventional superconductivity emerges microscopically. But more than that, a lot of these unconventional superconductors, they display a lot of interesting phases, uh, uh, electronic quantum phases that my group is also trying to understand, such as electronic pneumatic phases. So currently my group has been, uh, I'm interested in a few specific materials that uh, display uh, superconductivity or more generally strong correlated physics. So uh, I do a lot of research on a material called iron-based superconductors. More recently, I've also been working on something called twisted bilayer graphene. Uh, condensed matter physics is uh, a field that constantly sees new breakthroughs and new materials and new discoveries. Uh, the climate in university is harsh, but the climate in the department is quite warm. And uh, in that sense, I think uh, we are friendly with our students and we treat them as colleagues. And I think that's the most important. If you are starting to work with us, then you will get all the responsibilities and uh, also you will get all the respect which colleagues has uh, among themselves. And I think another thing climate-wise in the uh, department that we are inclusive. So basically, if you want to do something, you can always find a professor which will mentor you and you can always come to uh, some other professor if you have some questions which goes out of the expertise of your mentor and I'm sure you will always be able to find some help.